Have you ever wondered how people put scratch emojis in their comments? Or have you ever needed to search something on the forums and didn't know how to? Well, in this video, I will be showing you how to do those two things and more, so let's get started. So number one on this list, we have stop sign detection. Using this, you'll be able to detect when the user has actually clicked the stop sign. This allows you to create really good looking thumbnail transitions as seen in Taco Giant's game, The Lab. Now let me quickly show you how you can add this to your game. So all you're gonna wanna do to detect stop sign clicking is just green flag clicked, forever, make a variable, call this whatever you want, but I'm just gonna call it stop detection. And then from green flag click forever set stop detection to add a plus to timer plus 0 0.1. And then at the start here, you can reset timer and do whatever. And then you're just going to want a when loudness is greater than 10, change that to timer, replace that 10 with stop detection, and then just add an if. And then a greater than if timer is greater than stop detection. So we're just doing it again here. Then here you can put whatever you want to happen when it stops. I'll just have the cat say, say stop sign pressed. And then you can like stop the script. Then they'll stop everything. So we run it. Everything's good. We stop it. Stop sign pressed. Moving on to tip number two of the video is turbo mode detection. So in case you didn't know, you can enable turbo mode on any project by just holding shift and then left clicking the green flag. What turbo mode does is it just runs your project really fast, at 60 FPS to be exact. This can be useful for projects with pin, as it appears that the project is running faster than it really is. This can be an issue, however, if you have anything to do with physics in your game, like gravity for example. This is because it makes it hard to play and people might stop playing, or it could give them an unfair advantage if it's multiplayer. To prevent all of this, you could just add a detector in your game to detect when turbo mode is enabled, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So in order to detect turbo mode, all we need to do is in the backdrops, just add the script, when green flag clicked, reset timer, repeat 10 times, Switch backdrop to backdrop one or whatever one you're using. And then if timer is less than 0 0.1, then that means that turbo mode is on. And we don't want that because that's bad. So we just stop all. And if it gets to bottom here, we can just like run whatever you want, like broadcast, like start game to start the game. So if we run this, and I'll actually replace this with just like next backdrop, and we can add a backdrop just like that, so that we can then run it if we run it normally. It just stays there. But if we do with turbo mode, it switches to that. So that's that. Now, moving on to tip number three is emojis. So have you ever wanted to spice up your comments? Well, with emojis, you can do that. Just by adding two underscores with a certain text in between, you can add custom emojis to any comment. I'll put all of them up on screen now, and you can feel free to pause the video and look at that, but I'll go into depth on some of the more popular ones. Meow, we'll put a scratch cut emoji. Gobo, we'll put a gobo emoji. A colon, and then closed parentheses, we'll make a smiling scratch cat. An uppercase B, followed by closed parentheses, we'll put a very dapper looking scratch cat. A colon, parentheses, then uppercase P, we'll put scratch cat laughing. And lastly, a colon, uppercase D, followed by the less than sign, we'll get everyone's favorite scratch cat eating pizza. Now, moving on to tip number four, we have a great website called Ocular. Are you ever tired of using the scratch forms the old-fashioned way, or are you just needing to search for something within them? Or do you want to see all the posts made by a user? Well, Ocular has all of that and more. Just go to ocular.jeffalo.net 
and you will be able to search posts, browse the forms, and do much, much more. <laughs> Good God. Moving on to the final tip in this video, it is the remix tree. Have you ever wanted to see all the remixes of a project? Or do you remember a time when all Scratch projects had a button to view the remix tree on their page? It might appear as if that feature was wiped off the face of the Scratch website. This, however, is not the case, as you can still view the remix tree of a project by simply adding slash remix tree to the end of a project's URL. From here, you can see all the remixes of that project, along with the remixes of that remix, and so on. So that concludes this video. That's all for me today. If there's anything I missed or that you want me to make a video on, let me know in the comments. We're so, so close to 1,000 subscribers, so hit that subscribe button so we can get even closer. So thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.